Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back, I am Templar, and today we are actually going to be talking about the arms and armor of a centaur for this Fantasy Friday video. Now, I wanted to talk about this due to the fact Shad from Shadversity had actually done a video on his, I will leave a link down below for y'all, if y'all want to actually, well, view his versions. However, I decided what historical arms and armor could actually work for the centaur, that of which could actually properly, well, work for them, instead of this fantasy novel crap that we see from many Dra Dungeons and Dragons, Narnia and such, of which I do not approve of. Now this actually has come to me from one of my uh, viewers who actually decided to put this on a comment, of which, yes, I added it to this area of person. Now upon actually looking over some said fantasy gear and such, I mean, there's some anime design, I know, this doesn't, I, I, which I don't agree with, because here's the thing, maybe for it to be fully protective, yes, but no. Now though, there is this, of a Norman Knight version, of which actually does look practical and such, with mail and including, well, with a heater shield, and including with said, a type of gambeson surcoat. Now, if y'all don't know, during the times, medieval knights actually did this with their horses, rather than to put mail on them, but still. However, I don't know if that would be workable, but it might work. Problem is, though, I don't think they would get that with their hands on that much mail to begin with. However, there is some of this idiot armor, which I call it, because, well, just take a look at this. This is from the Narnia cast group, and here's the thing. Guess what it's doing? It's only covering his human parts. It's not covering the rest of his body. And the problem is, we gotta think, what is a centaur? Well, in truth, that's my point. We gotta get in their mindset. And in truth, a centaur is technically a type of species that lives and literally lives as a nomadic type group. Now, if none of y'all understand what a horse is, here's the thing. Horses in their true blood is are a nomadic type of croup or creature. They roam from one place and roam to the other. In doing so, they're technically, well, we gotta view them as just like a nomadic type culture, such as the Mongols, Huns, the Steppe People, the Tartars, or including the Turks or Cumans and such, that of which give us a good example to it. Now, that brings me to my next point, though. However, that's the thing. When I look at many fantasy groups, no, they don't do a very good group. In fact, it's even stated by the group said of the Greeks and Romans who actually write about centaurs, state the following that these creatures are a nomadic type of species, and of which that's something we gotta understand. However, then there's this fantasy novel crap that then shows them as domesticated creatures or whatever, which doesn't understand and make any point, and then they cover them in plate armor, which I, I, I don't know why, but people for fantasy... Here's the thing, follow history, follow the idealism of a creature, that way we can understand what the hell they look like properly, shall we? Now though, let's take a look at these fantasy weapons from the said group. Now, I mean, most of these look like they could work with a pole arm, the swords, and the bow, but that's about it. But they don't show the shield. Where's the shield? I don't see it. And that's my point though. I don't see this, I don't see that, I don't see anything that could work for them, and that's the problem. Now, here's the thing, I heard already, with Templar, if you have good armor, here's the thing. Just because they have good armor doesn't mean that they should not not use a shield, and in truth, these guys are a nomadic type of culture group. So we gotta understand what the hell they would truly look like, shall we? Now, in truth, I technically put their mo forms of armor, for example, in different categories, such as of bone, mail, and including of padding, scale and laminar, and as well, also of the lionel thorax, or in this case, the Greek linen lionel thorax, as many people call it. However, that's my point, though. I have to understand where they are from, and we have to understand what their armor would truly look like. Now, though, let's take a look at a type of armor, that of which many people say they would wear. This is medieval plate armor that is used by the medieval knights. However, I hear you already, oh, Templar, that'd be perfect for them. Here's the thing, no, it wouldn't. Due to the fact, as I stated before, 
these are a type of nomadic type of species. They wouldn't just stay in one place. They wouldn't do foraging. They wouldn't do this and that. They wouldn't make armor that of which would look like this. They would technically wear types of armor that would be used by steppe people. Now, if you all don't know what the steppe people are, here's the thing. If you take a look at the Mongols, the Huns, the Turks, the Tartars, the Cumans and such, those are parts of, well, a type of steppe people. They would not wear this. Here's the thing, though. This breastplate, I might see them wear, maybe, but the thing is, I probably don't view them wearing that for the rest of their entire group. In doing so, that's the thing. This plate armor for the cuirass would probably be the only form of plate armor that of which they would wear on their body. In which, this would probably be stolen from the battlefield, not made in their forges. So in doing so, this armor probably would not actually be seen anywhere on them. So sorry some fantasy fans, but you gotta admit this is kind of idiotic from what they would probably wear. However, let's take a look at the bone armor, or tusk armor as many people would call it. In fact, there are bone helmets and as well bone type laminar that, of which they could probably wear. Now I hear you already, oh, but aren't these guys supposed to be vegetarians? Well, yes and no. In fact, from Greek mythology, it's actually stated that these creatures actually both ate a form of balanced diet between well, regular vegetables and such, and as well of meat. This meat variety would actually, well, build up their strength tissue, especially for their human DNA that's inside the said part. So in two, the centaur would actually probably hell wear a bone-like helmet like this early on in time. However, in doing so, he might also wear hide armor, for example, which could be a good version. So why don't we take a look at that? Now, however, though, hide armor is also a good idea, however, there is also gambeson and padded armor. Now, hide armor, as we can think about it, could be a good version, especially with the Mongols, for example, who of which wore this type of armor. Now, however, this is an image of a said late African warrior during the time of the 1800s, and of which this is a type of armor that could actually stop arrows. And as you can see, he's covered his horse extremely well and himself with nothing more than padded armor. And as well, even late Roman cataphracts, for example, did wear a form of padded armor for their horse. The truth, this was actually able to actually stop a said blow of a weapon. The truth, this covers the entire body, and as which I do view a said, well, centaur to probably wear this set of armor, not wear plate armor mostly. Now, here's the thing though, this would probably be their main armor though. Why? Here's the thing. If we think about it, hide and gambeson armor can probably work best for them, especially because it works. Now, however, though, that's the thing. I hear you already. Tibor, what could that do? Here's the thing. Uh, this is a modern image from the modern-day country of Spain, which, if none of y'all remember, are famous for a type of bull-slash-horse fighting. I want to call it that, which, as you can see in this image, this is a bull, well, sticking its horn into the said, well, horse. But the thing is, the horse is unharmed. That's how good this armor was. And in fact, this could stop us said, well, cavalrymen to get gored. In fact, medieval knights during the said crusades and such did actually, well, protect their horse in this type of manner, rather than putting mail on them. In truth, though, this was actually the best way to actually cover their entire horse, which you got to understand, this is a good example of it. So yes, as we can understand, padded armor like this would cover the entire centaur's body, from his human body and down to who the rest of his, well, lower body. In truth, this could actually protect his legs, for example. Now, I hear you already, Templar, why is that a good example? Here's the thing. If you were to cut the said legs off of a horse, they go down instantly. They don't get back up. Especially can be seen during the late medieval period with the lunch connect, using their greatsword, Vihenda, to cut the legs off of horses. Do you see my point? In doing so, this was a good example for it. So, in truth, the centaur could actually pretty much use this type of armor rather than just no armor at all covering their legs. So, in truth, it would be a form of padding armor, mostly in their entire military. But in truth, this could actually be a good example for it. But now, what about the Greek lionel thorax, you might ask? Well, in truth, this is made out of linen and glue combined together. Now, in truth, I could pretty much see, say, 
a said centaur probably wearing this for his chest, but the rest of his body might be a bit of a problem, due to the fact this armor is not meant to be known to bend. However, if they could actually make it enough in a type of way, they could probably make sure it does. So in doing so, they could probably actually have a massive suit of said centaur lionel thorax. And in doing so, this could cover the entire centaur's body. So it does make a good example to it, but yeah, it's kind of hard to explain, but that would take years to manufacture rather than making padded or hide armor. So we gotta really think that one through. However, I hear you already. What about mail? Well, yes and no with mail, due to the fact I don't see, as I stated before, I don't see a said centaur making this armor from said mines due to the fact they don't have a chance to mine for this due to the fact of their body. In doing so, they would probably steal this from the battlefield off of the dead. And in doing so, this armor and truth would actually, well, probably work, but the thing is, they would have to kill a lot of said guys for them to make this set of armor. In truth, they would also probably have to take it from a dead horse, for example, or probably this, in order to make it work. However, though, that's the thing. Now, in truth, though, there is a mixture of scale male armor or scale laminar armor used in the Middle East and throughout the parts of Asia and India, like this, that of which actually did cover the entire body of a horse head to toe, and of which was actually used by the Roman cataphracts. The Roman cataphracts actually copied from their eastern neighbors, and of which made their armor like this. Now, that actually gives us a good example to it. However, that's the problem. This type of armor I probably have a, have a little bit of a problem with, as I stated. They would have to kill a lot of people in order for this to work. In truth, for this male and such to actually fit the body. And in doing so, the horse itself have different sizes. So in doing so, I don't see how a centaur is probably going to get one set of armor that's going to be fit the same way. But still, though, this is a good example for it. And in truth, I would go for this with the, the combined type of form. Now, you're already, okay, Templar, what about scale and laminar armor? Well, that's actually a good one. Now, in truth, as I stated before, they would actually have leather and as well steel. However, that's the thing. This steel and leather for this group, they would actually create from said ox hides or some sort of hide of a said animal that the, which they probably have hunted. In doing so, the said laminar, for example, the leather laminar, can work perfectly. In truth, this is a good example for it, as you can see, in truth. Now, however, the way they would make this would be extremely hard to explain, really. In truth, this could cover the said torso first, and then all the way going down, or it could probably work going up. It depends on how they would manufacture it. But that's the hard thing to explain, really. Now, that's extremely hard to explain because of the fact, when it comes down to laminar, what actually, how you actually have to manufacture it is mostly from the top down. This is actually how it works. In doing so, the, well, leather or steel pieces are attached from the top torso and this, well, continuously well, this plates downwards. Now, though, that's the thing, though. What about their steel versions? Well, that's also going to be working the same with their steel laminar and scale armor. However, that's the thing. Scale armor, different comprised from laminar, scale armor actually works from going from the bottom up when you make it. In fact, this can be seen when you sew it on cloth or you attach it with mail. Now, how does that work, for example? Well, in truth, it does work incredibly. And as well, if you think about it, this type of armor could actually, well, reach up to his body. In other words, he could actually get some scale attachments and technically, well, move his way up from his front towards his upper back. And doing so, this could probably work for him. In fact, if you think about it, this kind of actually does make a good point of view. However, if you take a look at this image here, this gives a good example of what I mean by it. In fact, only half of its said body is covered, while the rest is not. So, in doing so, this does give a good point. But now, what about their helmets, you might ask? Well, that's the thing. Their metal helmets would not exactly look, well, like what you think. In truth, they could steal them from the battlefield, or what they could do is make it from this, laminar. Laminar 
helmets are incredible and in fact these are Lombard helmets that were actually used during the migration period into Italy. I hear you already, but Templar, could they also make it out of scales? Yes! But see, that's my point. Now, doing so, I hear you already. Templar, didn't you say they couldn't get that much metal? Well, as I stated before, they can take this from the battlefield and, well, reforge it into smaller pieces. Now, I hear you already. Templar, how is that even possible? Well, you might actually want to ask that from the Turks, the Mongols, the Hans, or any steppe people, as I stated before. These people actually did this type of armor, and of which it actually worked. It covered them incredibly well. Even though most of it was leather, however, those that were able enough could have actually covered themselves in steel laminar, or scale armor. And well, it does work incredibly well. But now you're all right. But Templar, how did they get their hands on us? Well, by mainly winning battles, for example. Now, how would that be? Well, here's the thing. If you were to technically defeat a massive army, you could actually take their armor and turn it into this. Especially during the early periods, it's actually stated that Laminar was the most superb type of plate armor, or type of cuirass armor at the time. So this would have actually been perfect for them. The same thing goes with scale armor. As well, if you think about it, this would be the perfect type of armor that of which they could probably wear. But now I hear you already. But Templar, I still want to put them in a full cuirass plate armor. Here's the thing. Medieval knight armor of the late period is not a good idea to put for this. So in doing so, I would technically recommend that many of you that are in a fantasy rethink this and put them into more, well, nomadic type of armor. In other words, put them in Hunnic armor. Put them in... Mongol armor, put them in, said, well, anything that's swell of the steppe people of Asia or Europe. And during so, you can actually get better armor for them, and as well, they would look a lot more badass, and they would be a lot harder to kill. In fact, it's actually stated that scale and laminar was so durable, in fact, it could stop arrows. Which, that's saying something. But now, why don't we get to their shield? Now, in truth, I don't see any shields that are used by the centaurs, which is... It's kind of really idiotic in fantasy films because it doesn't make any sense. Because technically they're exposing their entire body and you would think they would have a shield. Which doesn't make any sense. So what would their shield look like? Well, it might be this. The kite shield. Now, why the kite shield, you might ask? Here's the thing. Norman knights loved using the kite shield because of the fact it covered their entire body from their shoulder all the way down to, well, their knee or sometimes even further down to their foot. And in doing so, these shields were incredible. Now the only reason it was replaced by the heater shield was because of the male leggings. So in doing so, this would work perfectly for a said, well, centaur. Why do I say that? Here's the thing. Uh, if I was to use this shield, the kite shield, in the process, have a two meter long pike, for example, or even longer pike, like Lance, I don't even need to hold the reins of a horse anymore since I'm a centaur, and in doing so, the shield would just hang off my left side while I'm holding the said spear. In doing so, this could work perfectly, as we can understand. So yeah, the kite shield does work perfectly for them. Now I hear you already, but Templar, that doesn't make any sense. Why would that work? Well, here's the thing. Look at this image here. This is of a Roman cataphract, and as you can tell, he's holding the spear in two hands, and in doing so, that actually worked perfectly for him. In doing so, the shield... It doesn't imagine if he's holding a kite shield, for example, on his left side, he's completely protected now. And in doing so, he doesn't need to hold on to the reins of the horse. But that's my point. So yeah, we can understand why. Of which brings me to my next item, the lance. Now, the lance, as we can see here, these would actually be perfect for them, especially if they would probably be a pike-sized lance, or even longer, such as, for example, if they would be, say, a lance that was used in a medieval knight's time, or, better yet, a pike-sized type lance, that of which would be twice as long, and as well, would be perfect. Why would I say that? Here's the thing, just imagine a huge nomadic group of said centaur warriors charging in on you like it's, well, like they're charging in on you, technically like a force of evil. And in doing so, this can actually give us a good example to it. Now, why would I say that? Here's the thing. Would you want to go up against a said entirely fully armored type of centaur warriors, that of which have kite shields, laminar, or scale, or padded armor, as well with some type of form of mail, 
in the process covered head to toe from that entire armor and as well they come charging in at you holding a well elongated pike and here's the thing your arrows are technically bouncing right off of them would you want to go up against anything like that i certainly wouldn't in truth that gives us a good example to what the centaurs would probably use as a type of well full charging weapon however i can already but some are what about their missile weapons. Well, in truth, they would use this, the Recurve Hunnic Bow. In truth, these bows are perfect. Why? Here's the thing, as I stated before, these are a step people type group. These are a nomadic type of group, so in doing so, they need a lightweight bow, and the Recurve Bow is one of them. In truth, the Huns love this bow for a massive amount of reasons. The Mongols love this bow for a massive amount of reasons. Every type of steppe people or nomadic culture loved this bow because it was so light and as well it was effective enough you can actually release it while you're riding on your horse. That is horrifying. Just imagine of how dangerous this would have been on the battlefield, especially if you got hit by it. So in truth, this would have worked perfectly for a said, well, nomadic warrior like the centaur. However, that also brings me to another weapon, the lasso. Now I hear already, Templar... A lasso? Why would you say a lasso would be a weapon? Well, in truth, they are a weapon. If I was to understand the entire aspect of the lasso, for example, these weapons were extremely dangerous. How so? Here's the thing. During the time of the fall of the late Roman Empire, or the time of the very end of the late Roman Empire, such as, say, with none other than Attila the Hun, the Huns, in the process, attacked the Roman military group, and in doing so, they even came at them, not just with bows and swords and such, but also with the lasso. Now I hear it already, but Templar, how can the lasso be dangerous? Well, in truth, that's the thing. The way the Huns used this weapon is the fact they actually, what they did, is that they were to throw the lasso in the process. The opening of the lasso would then wrap around a said Roman legionnaire's neck. So just imagine what this could do to a foot soldier. In doing so, I could then actually drag the soldier along and in the process he could snap his neck in the process. In the process he could die incredibly well quickly. So why is it that we don't understand how dangerous the lasso is? Kind of because of the fact many people view it as just a farming weapon. But in truth, these weapons are incredibly dangerous. And as well, even if also, it's just also incredibly horrifying. Hunnic warriors actually used the lasso on people that were actually horseback riding, and especially, they actually were stated to have lassoed them off of their horse, killing them instantly upon breaking their neck. So in doing so, this is incredible, and also just imagine what would happen if as soon as this said, well, foot soldier is lassoed, here's the thing, here comes another warrior going to thrust his spear, or worse, a sword or something, into him. So in doing so, this is a good weapon for them also. Now that also brings me to another weapon, the Warhammer and the Mace. Now why these two weapons? Kind of obvious. These weapons were perfect for nomadic cultures because of the fact of their effectiveness on the battlefield. In fact, these type of weapons are incredibly gruesome. However, they wouldn't look like, well, a full metal mace head like we see in movies. These would actually just be made, this entire shaft wouldn't be made of wood, and as well, the regular mace head would actually be made out of metal. The same thing goes for the Warhammer. In truth, these would be a primitive version look, if you could call it that. But in truth, this does make a little more better sense to it. And of which I do agree with this look a little more, rather than them having full metal mace type weapons. However, that then brings us to the axe. Now I hear you already. Templar, an axe? Why an axe? Here's the thing. If I was to understand why the axe is so gruesome, we can actually understand what they would look like. In fact, they had different versions. In fact, they were nicknamed Horseman's Axes for a big reason. In fact, the Cuman Axe from Kingdom Come Deliverance is a good example. Why? Here's the thing. This is what it would look like in real life. They would have a throwing design into it. However, this could also be used as a type of weapon that would be used for close quarters fighting. And sometimes, though, they would even have a p type of spike on the very end just for a type of purpose to actually get through plate armor. Now, however though, that actually brings me to this axe, that of which was used in the late 1800s by cavalry. These type of axes were extremely weird looking, as you can tell. In fact, it had a blade end for the axe, it had a hammer end for, well, the back end, 
and a small pike-like piece on the very bottom. In truth, these were actually mainly a replacement or a primary weapon, and then you would switch to your sword. However, that's the thing, these were incredibly terrifying, and most of the time these weapons were only used on the eastern ends of Europe, say like Russia, Poland, or Bulgaria and such. You can see my point. Of which, these weapons were incredibly gruesome by far for cavalry, so I could probably just imagine what these could actually be used by a centaur. And as well, these would be slightly longer than a normal axe because of the fact that these would actually be used for, well, close quarters combat. But in truth, these could actually pretty much kill a guy, especially. But now I hear you already. Simplar, what about their swords? Well, I'm glad you asked because of the fact the sword is one of the most dangerous weapons out there. And in truth, there are many swords I kind of actually had to put in here that would actually probably be used by a said, well, centaur. Now, I would put the falcata in it, I would put the falcs, a bastard sword, a messer, and some eastern Asian sabers. So why don't we get into that, shall we? Let's first take a look at the falcata. Now I hear you already, Templar, why would you put the falcata in here? Well, kind of obvious. These type of weapons were perfectly used by said, well, military groups, such as the Celt Iberians and including the Carthaginian cavalry. And as well, these weapons were so dangerous, in fact, it stated that while on horseback, this weapon could cleave through you even more than it could on foot. So just imagine if how dangerous this weapon was prior before the said saber came around. In truth, though, that's my point. In fact, actually in a show called Deadliest Warrior, they actually had the said Falcata go up against the said Mongol Saber. And as which, this is prior before the Mongol Saber came around, and as which, this was the Saber prior before the Mongols came around. So in truth, this type of weapon is kind of terrifying because of the fact of that forward curve. This is like, this has the weight of a sword for you, but it has the weight of an axe to your opponent. And that's on foot. So just imagine how much damage this could do to you if, say, the person was coming at you on cavalry. Yeah, kind of horrifying, doesn't it? But now I hear you already. But Templar, why did you put the falcs in here? Kind of obvious. The falcs is a good weapon. And also, seeing as though they could probably use it as a one-handed falcs or a two-handed falcs, this would be extremely gruesome for a said foot soldier. In fact, these weapons were horrifying just for a soldier on foot. But... Just imagine if this is going to come at you, say, from a person driving on cavalry as a centaur. In truth, this would be perfect for them. And as well, this could actually probably see a lot more better to actually work with them. I kind of have to agree, though, but the thing is, this chopping motion would perfectly kill a person. And now I hear you already, but Templar, what about the Bastard Sword? The Bastard Sword, I've seen many animes and everything, and it works, right? Well, yes. Problem is, you don't, I repeat, you don't want to actually use two of them. In truth, the Bastard Sword is a type of weapon that of which you had to use with mostly two hands. You can use it with one. Problem is, you don't want to use it that way. In truth, it actually becomes a lot harder to actually move the sword. So in doing so, two-handed type of versions of this would probably work. However, I probably only view a said... Centaur probably wearing this, say, if he's, I don't know, wearing full laminar or scale armor or something like that. That of which could be a good example. So in truth, maybe this could work for him. I'm a little bit on the fence, but you see my point. However, let's go to the Grossmesser. The Grossmesser is one of my favorite late medieval type swords, of which we can see why. This is a two-handed type of knife. And this type of weapon is incredibly dangerous. Now in doing so, this war knife, for example, if you were to actually get cut by it, it's technically near effective as a great sword that was used as a Zweihanda. So in doing so, if this has enough cutting mobility as a Zweihanda, we could probably see how dangerous it is. So in truth, I would probably view a centaur probably using this a lot more than a said long sword or bastard sword, mainly because of that curve in the blade. However, he would use this only as a two-handed type use. So in truth, this could probably still work for him incredibly well, rather than just well as we see it. But in truth, this could probably work for him. But now I hear you already. But Templar, what about Eastern-style swords? 
Well, there are a couple that would have actually been used by the Mongols, the Chinese, and including the Huns, and of which these do give a good example to what they would have used. These were nomadic style weapons, and as well these were also used by Turks, and pretty much every steppe people. Why were these curved swords used by them? Kind of obvious. These were actually a type of curved blade that was perfect for cavalry, and they discovered this over time. Especially the Cumans, who actually started to adopt it a little more during the time of the 1300s and 1400s. And as well, we see these mostly in the game Kingdom Come Deliverance, which is kind of cool, to say the least. But yes, these are a good example to what they would look like. So in truth, if you ask me guys, I loved actually talking about this video because it gave me a little bit of a hard and as well a very good ideal to understand what these people would technically look like. But if you all are asking me of what I would probably see a centaur probably wearing and using most of the, of the time, when it comes down to their shield, it would always be a kite shield. When it comes down to their armor though, that would be a hard one because in truth, I would mostly see them wearing gambeson padded armor, that of which would actually probably be used by the Huns and medieval knights that we see in history. And as well, we could probably understand that this padded armor could probably protect their entire body. So in truth, that could probably work with them. Or as well, they would technically cover themselves also with a Lionel Thorax. Either way, it would probably work. But anyways, either one of those two would probably work, but I would probably mostly go with the padded armor. Now, when it comes down to their metal armor though, that's a hard part for me. In truth, I would probably view them probably using either scale or laminar rather than said plate. Rather, rather in bigger use than their said plate counterparts. However, if they have a chance to get said this type of medieval cuirass, I could probably view them wearing it only for their upper torso, not the rest of their entire body. So, you can see my point. But however though, the scale armor I would probably go with best because of the fact it's a lot easier to manufacture than it is laminar and in doing so they could actually sew it on the said gambeson so in doing so it could probably work a little better now though mail maybe if they have a chance to say take it off the dead mostly so probably yes and a probably a big no it's a 50 50 on this depending how much they can probably get because Remanufacturing mail is not as easy as remanufacturing plate into scale, so you see my point. However, when it comes to their metal helmets, I mostly view them wearing a said laminar helmet, that of which it looks incredibly awesome for them, if you ask me. But as well, with their weapons, for example, I would, as I stated, I would mostly see them when it came down to the sword, I would see it used as, say, the, the Grossmissa, the Falks, or the Falcata, mostly or including when it comes to the Eastern Sabres as a one-handed weapon. But when it comes, as I stated, as a two-handed weapon, it would either be the Falks or the Messer mostly. And their bow would always be the Mongol Hunnic bow, and as well they could probably use the lasso, and as well a type of pike, of which they could use as a two-handed type lance. So, you gotta understand my point about this. But, however guys, let me know in the comments below if you think that there should have been something added to this, because as I stated before, you know, here's the thing guys, make sure that if it's, that it has to be said, nomadic type of group. We can't just add this plate armor from late medieval Europe on them just because we want to. We have to understand of what they would truly look like. We have to understand what they would act like, how they would look like, and incredibly of what they would use on the battlefield. But still, guys, hopefully you like this video. Like and subscribe. Also, click that bell button for notifications, especially when an upcoming video comes up. Also, make sure to actually see our armor on the said upcoming videos later on, of which I am pretty much trying to either choose for their next Fantasy Friday to either be the Seder or the Minotaur, of which do a vote down in the comments because I want to actually see which one they could probably do first because I want y'all to actually explain this to me of which I could probably do better but yeah anyways guys hopefully you like this video as well as I stated before also check out our Facebook so that way you know which video is gonna come up next anyways guys this has been Templar have a great day mm -hmm.